Hello, I'm Dr. Lisa Richardson, the Division Director of Cancer Prevention and Control at CDC. I want to thank the organizers for having me today to talk about electronic health records for public health planning and research. I will review the work that we're doing at CDC in this area. Abraham Lincoln said that the best way to predict your future is to create it. So at CDC, this is what we've been doing since 1992 when the National Program of Cancer Registries was um, authorized by Congress. And so here what we see is um, data volume and complexity for cancer registration is really where we started in CDC. And so what you see is that there are tons of hospitals, labs, oncology offices, you name it, trying to get the information into our cancer registry record. And one of the charges we were given by Congress was to figure out how to do this electronically. So that's been our mission um, since 1992. And so here we all thought that the electronic health record would be the panacea. Um, we'd have all this information, we'd have access to it. Well, I must say it hasn't panned out. As you see here on this cartoon, you know, where is the ERPR result? Now, today, we're still saying, where's that ERPR result? <laughs> and so, you know, as an oncologist, it's really hard to figure out where to find this information. And for cancer registrars and others who need it, it's very difficult to find. So this is one of our missions, um, looking at the EMR or the health record. So this is a little cartoon I like to use. There's like, we're going to go from paper records to standard coded data. Um, and in the middle, it says forms. <laughs> so what it really means to me is like what the little guy says there is, I think you should be more explicit in step two. Like, what is it that we're actually doing? And I'm going to describe that. One of our main efforts that we started in 2004, 2005 is with the College of American Pathologists. There's an electronic cancer checklist for all of the major cancers. What this checklist does, and now that we have, you know, thousands of pathologists signed up to use the checklist, is that it standardizes the data for cancer reporting. So you're able to transmit that data, um, get it the data, and it's a drop down menu. As you know, all of us love to talk. So those previously, these were dictated records. And it was, you know, you had to find the pieces of the information that you needed. Now it's all standardized. And what that does for us, it really allows for easier transfer of information to anyone, anywhere, because the data are structured. And this is just a very brief look at, this was in 2017. There were about 4,000 pathologists who had signed up to use the CAP checklist. You know, the numbers aren't important, but here you see that the brown and the red and the blue have increased. There are fewer states that are clear. So we have moved into a place where electronic reporting is what pathologies do naturally. So this is a report from CDC about how do we communicate and collaborate between healthcare and public health. And one of the ways we can do that is with our data, but we have to build systems where we can transfer data back and forth between um, the public health system and the medical system. And what I will say is that they are very different, but related. And so there has to be a way for us to have a better communication, especially in some of the things that we're doing today with social determinants of health, health equity. How do we ensure that everyone is being treated equitably? So one of the one of our um, one of our goals has been to move our data to the cloud where it will be easier. So previously I talked about the checklist. So what we want to happen at CDC is that the health record data, pathology data would be reported directly to a cloud. And then anyone who needs that data with the permission of the patient will be able to go in and get that data. Laboratories have begged for this for years because they report to multiple sources. And so this will be a solution to what they need. And so right now, what we've done is we've proven it, proof of concept that our programs can do this. The last couple of years, we've been building capacity there. And what I can say now is that 90% of our state cancer registries, central cancer registries, are able to receive PATH reports from the cloud. So I, I talked about this a couple of years ago when we talked about the comprehensive cancer control planning you know, what do we need? We need data and we need accurate data and we need it quickly. So here is the overall look at some of the work we're doing with the PCOR Trust Fund at CDC. We got some money here to look at 
How can we use the cloud? How can we use health records for timely access, transfer, and use of these data? Because there's a ton of data out there. I will caution though, and others will probably talk about this as well, these data are imperfect. So there has to be more than one way for us to get these, this information um, from the records um, or other sources of data. So our steps in the e electronic case reporting, patients are diagnosed, the healthcare provider will enter the information into the record, then those data are triggered, a report to the um, health agency, public health will receive the data, and then state and local departments will be able to use that data for cancer control planning. And everything I've talked about here and what I'm gonna talk about next can be applied in multiple conditions. This is not just a cancer. Um, issue. So this is just the example that we're using today. So can electronic records be used to modify um, and track complex procedures? So what we've noticed in the pandemic is that screening dropped dr dramatically. This is as of uh, a year ago. We're still, you know, 300,000, 400,000 down from numbers before the pandemic, so we have a ways to go. But how can we facilitate finding those men and women who need to be screened? I just wanted to briefly say that, you know, the complexity in screening is that it's not just a test. You're screened with a screening test, but you gotta get all the way to treatment if you have an abnormality. So the, the solution that we're coming up with or working on will do that inside the health record. Again, Guidelines are extremely complex, hard to keep up. So how can we hardwire it into the record, the electronic health record, or through a software program that can be added to the health record to assist physicians and other healthcare providers and health systems? So the President's Cancer Panel actually just reported out um, last month on all four of the screening tests that are approved by the USPSTF. But what we want to do is CDC is how do we convert narrative guidelines into computable formats? All the guidelines I showed you previously, how do we integrate that? And then how will that assist us in continuing um, to serve people in the best way possible? And this is everyone, not just the people that we serve at CDC, but the entire population. So the example we're starting with is cervical cancer. It's very complicated. And we know that it's preventable. So 60% of women in a recent study we just published with cervical cancer had never been screened. Two thirds of those women with an abnormal test result did not receive adequate follow-up. So the screening is not happening. And when it does happen, they're abnormals. Follow-up is not happening appropriately. So how do we, and with our program specifically, but I think this is everywhere I, because nobody ever calls me about my PEP test result. Nobody calls me about my MAM result. So it's not just in these high risk settings, but these are super high risk safety net settings where this may not, there may not be staff, suboptimal health information technology, um, reimbursement, administrative challenges and challenges accessing specialty care, which we've all heard about multiple times. So here's the solution that, you know, we are working on with MITRE, um, screening and management clinical decision support tool. So what this will do, the, you see it says breast, cervical, and colorectal. These guidelines will be hardwired into the record. They will identify women and men who need to be screened. Then it will initiate, you know, a reminder to the provider to do that screening. And then the guidelines for follow-up are also integrated into the system. This should improve the numbers of women appropriately and equitably screened for a cervical cancer, but for all cancers. And in this project, we're going to use multiple settings, regional healthcare systems, community, um, community clinics, as well as um, private clinics to see how this works in multiple settings, not just in this, the uh, safety net setting. And so this is, I'm close to the end here. So how do we, what are the benefits of public health? How do we empower scientists, get more accurate data? And really that's the goal of CDC and our surveillance is to get more accurate data in a faster way, save time, obviously, encouraging innovation. Um, you know, we're all exhausted from the two years of being isolated in the pandemic, but, you know, innovation is still, creativity is still out there. We need to move, promote working together and ensure sustainability. For those of you who are, you know, like me, you like all of these, it's sort of, I won't describe all of this to you. You'll have the slides, but, you know, reacting 
the reality versus the opportunity. Um, this is my uh, most favorite um, image that I've found in a while. It says that action is the foundational key to all success. We've been acting and working at CDC. Now we're sharing, have been all along. Imperfect action is better than perfect inaction. You never go anywhere if you don't start. And success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm, which um, those of you who know me know that that I'm very enthusiastic and it does take a lot to discourage me. But I think we have a perfect future, not perfect, but a bright future in front of us as far as trying to figure out how to use this information, capture it and use it. Thank you for your attention.